All right, right I'm going to hit the button. <laughs> Okay. All right. And we're live. <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> I'm so excited to talk to Kristen Abate about her uh, film, Straighten Up. Wait, Straighten Up and Fly Right. Is that right? Yes. You got okay. it. I, for some it. reason, I'm like, I'm going to mess it up, but it's everybody knows that song. So um, before we get started, I, I will introduce myself. My name is Rebecca Martin. I am the founder, managing editor, and festival director for Cinema Femme. And I am very passionate about female filmmakers, and I just love elevating their stories. Uh, so here we are today. Um, yeah, so Kristen, I, I hope it's okay that I just kind of dive into stuff. Um, before I ask questions about the film, I thought it was interesting in your bio how the final <laughs> sentence is saying, Abate is a college dropout whose work is centered around New York stories, characters, and women-driven narratives. And I love that. So I thought, you know, we could talk about first, like, what that means and, you know, yeah. Yeah, that's a really great question. Um, specifically because I really wanted to follow a traditional path, even though my life was not traditional at all. Um, I grew up in the West Village in the 90s. I, you know, single parent home, stepfather, interracial uh, relationship that my mom had. And, mm -hmm. you know, it was just wild. It was a really wild time. And I think kids sometimes really want to do something that's like normal, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. which is when you realize you're like, that was dumb. Like who wants to be yeah. normal? That's so uninteresting mm -hmm. and boring. Mm -hmm. And so kind of going to college was my attempt at doing that. And mm -hmm. I just realized I didn't fit in. I didn't want to be part of a curriculum, you mm -hmm. know, and, and be told what to learn or what book to read. I just wanted to find my own path. Yeah. And that was kind of why I mean, I just was like, fuck this. Like, I don't, right. you know, I, I don't think it, maybe it's not right for everybody. I do, I do think some people it really benefits, mm -hmm. but for me in particular, because of the, the, the relationship I have with New York and the people that were in my life, they nourished me so much with art, music, performance, literature, that my education started so much earlier. And mm -hmm. I feel like I got to tailor what I really wanted to focus on in my life. Um, because of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, I wound up when I did drop out, I actually reached out to Steven, um, who we'll talk about, you know, who's yeah, the co-director right. and co-writer mm -hmm. and co-star mm -hmm. and co everything of my life. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, we had lost contact over some years and I, when I was dropping out, I was like, Hey, do you remember me? Um, <laughs> are you, are you still doing theater? Like, what are you up to? And can I be a part of it? And then that also was the thing that like catapulted me out of this fine, like rigid structure that I was enforcing on myself that I actually really never needed. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Well, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm so glad you decided to go the route you did because you're super talented and I, yeah. So yeah, let's get in the movie. <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> um, I would love to talk about the conception and the evolution of the film, because um, I know you guys went through a lot to make it. Uh, yeah. So can you talk about how it got started and where you know you went from there? Sure, yeah. So really the, the starting and the sort of seed of it is that Stephen was watching the news and he happened to catch the moment when 45, let's just put it that way, mocked the disabled reporter mm -hmm. and it enraged him as it should have and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he saw it in a totally different way than what most people would see and he saw it as a, a call to action to do something about it mm -hmm. and didn't really know what but just knew that something was going to happen because of that and at the time Stephen and I were living in the same building and I lived in the same building with him for about 13 years so we saw each other every single morning we had coffee together every single morning. We would go over the latest events and he right. brought that up and said, I have to do something about this. And I was like, okay, cool. I'll be there for whatever you want to do. Um, mm -hmm. And let's, let's do it. Let's figure it out. And so he kind of started to shape something um, and uh, approached me very early on and said, you know, I've never really fully explored my disability in a big way. Mm -hmm. And I want to do that this time. 
um, and I don't want to hide it and I don't want to just make it a, a second character and say like, you know, that right. it's there, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so then it was a chance to say like, okay, let's put this character in the forefront. Let's put the voice of, you know, his disability. And then because of the way that we work and the very specific relationship that we have, he asked me to play that character. Yeah. And that, you know, was a really big challenge for me, but also seemed like the most obvious choice because of our relationship and because mm -hmm. of how close we are and how well I know him. And, and that's kind of how it happened. So he had this seed. And then I also was bringing in another voice to the story, which was yeah. my own experiences and my own sort of uh, struggles with depression and anxiety and isolation and kind of mm -hmm. us hybriding our two lives and our yeah. two stories and kind of going on this path together. And mm -hmm. so that's really just the origin of just yeah. the film, but also yeah. kind of how Stephen and I work together. Yeah, that's great. And then um, could you talk, well, two, two part question. Um, yeah. Can you talk a little bit about the character you were playing? And also um, I'm curious how you trained for this role mm -hmm. and how did you get in the headspace as well? Yeah, so the character who's also named Kristen, and yeah. <laughs> which let me tell you, so, you know, that was in and of itself a challenge because it goes, oh, well, there's no separation then, mm -hmm. you know, there's Kristen, this character, but it's Kristen, me having to show up for this character. Um, and so she, the character, while living with a disability that I don't have, but living with my depression, living with my anxiety, living with my mm -hmm. things that I also was writing and giving voice to, which was terrifying for me because there is no hiding my actual thoughts because right. <laughs> it's really coming for me and I'm playing that too. Um, and so we were also filming in, in our building that we lived in. So there was never a separation between me and this role that was always there. Um, and so the training really came more from my life than it did from a specific uh, like technique. It was, mm -hmm. this is me and Steven's story. This is Steven's body that I have helped through many traumas and have been there to help heal and know what it's like for him to walk through the world because I've been his eyes and ears for years. Mm -hmm. So it was really pulling on these life experiences um, and, and embodying them and not being afraid to say like, this is, um, this is very difficult physically and emotionally because it's so close. But mm -hmm. the bigger picture is that this character represents a lot of people and re represents mm -hmm. a lot of people with either disability or people who are struggling with mental health and isolation. And so that was kind of how I took this character on. Um, and also yeah. we worked with a lot of actors that we've worked with over the years and people that I really trusted. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have to build a fake relationship with people. I didn't have to rely on other things. I could really look the person in the eye that was across from me and be like, oh, I really know you. You really know me. And use all of that to layer into Kristen's experience and how she either grows in the film or sort of uh, regresses at times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. And uh, something I was fascinated by was the technical aspects of the film, um, specifically the use of split screen and sound. Um, can you talk about the split screen bit first, and then we can sure. get into the sound bit? Yeah. Yeah, well, I have to say that the technical parts of the film are some of the parts I'm the most proud of. Mm -hmm. because it really highlights and shines the light on the people that I worked with behind the camera, who Armando Croda, Lindsay Cordero, Rodrigo, they are just the backbone of this film also. And they did so much beyond the technical aspects, but because mm -hmm. of them, we have such a beautiful film. Mm -hmm. um, the split screen was specifically written in because we wanted to show when the two characters meet each other for the first time, we didn't want there to be a cut and a cut and where you can't literally see what they're both seeing, which is these mirror images of each right. other. Uh -huh. And so yeah, it's I like, that. Mm -hmm. yeah, that camera and the angle and the, um, the split screen dissolving and coming in, it, it really literally is a mirror yes. of that moment, which mm -hmm. the fact that, you know, 
first of all, Armando's framing of that for each character and he knew exactly how to do it. And then the editing of it to bring those two things together is what makes that moment magical and also yeah. um, so potent for both characters. Like that's when the movie really sets off because these two characters are like these two yeah. atoms are coming together and in that moment right. exploding. Yeah. 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 I I love that. Um, and then with sound, like actually there's a specific scene. Um, well, I guess scenes that that I really appreciated that I think had a lot to do with sound. Um, when when you're in the shower and mm. you know the water is just coming down on you and your back and you know you you have that spoon thing. <laughs> you yeah, know? the ladle. Yeah. Yeah, and I just I I love those scenes because I I feel like when you're in a shower, like you're cleansing, like you're, mm -hmm. you're kind of like all the gunk and everything you've dealt with, like with the past days or the day is yeah. just kind of washing through, even though right. I know the character obviously has a lot of stress and it's like that, but yeah, you know, yeah. like I, I, I just love how the water sounded. So mm. I don't know if you could talk about those scenes. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, again, the sound design we had, the most amazing team of people. I think they, they were a bigger team of people than we were a crew of making that film for six years. Mm -hmm. And they spent so much time developing the sound because we knew going into making this film that this particular character we're, fo we're following around, you know, her point of view is literally down. You rarely see her okay. face. She herself can rarely see around her. So sound is such a key element to how the audience can enter into this character's world and feel how loud things are at times. Like even the water, you know, we're so close to the water hitting the body. Yeah. And for, for this character, she showers in the morning and specifically because her body, when you have arthritis, when you're in that much pain, you need the heat to wake your body up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so where people usually shower at night, you know, or like if that's their way of cleansing the world off, she's preparing for the world. And that's part of yeah. her preparation. Mm -hmm. and getting out there and sort of unfreezing a little bit. Um, and so Omar and the team um, who did our sound, they knew that we would need to have things that would really grab people in, you know, and really kind of test the city sounds also. And not to mention the music, which is a huge part of our sound design. Um, mm -hmm. Marco Buccelli, who did a sound, did an incredible job in capturing the rhythm of things mm -hmm. to also highlight this character's world and the sound in which she's feeling inside. Um, yeah. So we had the outside sound and we also had the inside sound. So the sound design was really the music that was created and scored for the film. And then the, the sound design that was done for the city and for this character. And again, there's these, all, these two things are coming together mm -hmm. to propel the story forward. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. so great. And uh, I mean, I, I love how uh, the, you know, Kristen <laughs> gets transformed throughout the film and really finding her voice. And, mm. you know, I, I, I wanted to ask, and this is a question I ask most people I interview, um, what do you hope people uh, see in your film? Mm. Yeah, I, you know, the, the transformative element of the film was not necessarily something that was um, intentional like we want this to be a film that transforms people and you know right. they'll, they'll come away feeling so positive but I think because of the time that it took for us to make it and the sort of energy at which we had to sustain all the time when you're creating a project or you're making a film it's really an act of hope and mm -hmm. constant effort to keep something alive right <laughs> including yourself yeah. um, and so I was surprised when we watched the sort of final cut of the film of the trajectory that there is this transformation of the character. And then I realized in a sneaky way that like, because it took us six years to make, when I started wow. the film, I was a completely different person. Mm -hmm. And by yeah. the time we got to the end of making it, I, w I was literally transformed from my own life experiences, from the life experience of making this film and understanding that, um, you know, we create things in hopes that it lives beyond us mm -hmm. and that it yeah. reaches other people and it moves them. Um, and so that's what I hope happens. Um, and that there's this element of passing it on that happens in the film with the little girl character. 
Yes. Yeah. 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 And that's a real, like Steven, you know, he really did that for me in my life. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, he sort of reached in and and pulled me up and said, like, we're going to go on this journey together and, you know, it's going to be uncomfortable or you're going to cry and kick and scream. But in the end, we're going to have something beautiful. And then my character does it for another character. Yes. Yeah. That's true. You know, that's happening. And that's what I want for people to walk away with. And, and to know that us as the creators have been transformed by the process of making it, Mm -hmm. you know, have all grown um, exponentially in our lives and our careers. And, and I hope that that sort of transmutes to other people and that energy goes out and out and out and out. (laughs) Yeah, no, it was great. And that, that girl in the, in the film, I forget her name, but she's, she's amazing. And I love how, like, (laughs) I mean, I don't think this is spoiling anything. No, it's not like in the end, when you're with the girl, you're like, Oh, you know, you, you can make fun of me and, and this will be for the play. And I was like, I wonder if that's how you guys were with her initially. <laughs> You're like, yeah. oh yeah. Just make, I mean, if she had an audition, you know, just make fun of me, you know, like, totally. was that kind that, of how that it went? Yeah. It was exactly the audition. And okay. <laughs> I, I'm so proud of her work because she's a, an amazing actress and she's such a sweet person. And, you know, she, we auditioned a lot of little girls and, you know, they were very timid at first, of course, because, you know, we're little girls are taught to be nice. And we were asking them to do the opposite, like, just say whatever's on your mind, be mean, don't feel bad about it. And Uh if any girl kind of went beyond the like level of like, Oh, I was bad, you know, she's like, I'm so sorry, I'm sorry. And Merritt Marsh, the actress who plays Soleil, she just came in and she went in on me, you know, like, (laughs) she wasn't like, sorry. Although that's her personality, but she knew like, this is acting, you know, like you can do this and it's okay. And for a little girl to know that that's really cool because that means I hope that she'll continue to bring that in her life. Um, you know, and, and yeah, and that's also true in me and Steven's life, you know, and in our writing and in our directing together and on our creative collaborations that like, you know, sometimes we're pretty, you know, you poke and stick at each other because it's also part of, creating and and allowing yourself to be messy or say something mean or do something different or scary and that's why we do this work because it gives us a safe space to do it yeah and it it makes it really authentic you know like the the film feels very authentic and obviously it's coming from a true place so I mean that that totally makes sense um yeah, I mean, I I was going to ask you about the pandemic and what mm-hmm. struggles you guys dealt with, but I don't know. I mean, you kind of touched on that, but I don't know mm-hmm. if there's anything else you could share sure. about the struggles of making a film during the pandemic, which is very difficult. Yeah, yeah. yeah for sure. I think um, I'll say that pre-pandemic, um, you know, Stephen had went through a really difficult time with his health. So we were kind of already in our own like sort of mini experience of living life on the edge of, you know, and, but by that point, we'd already been working for four years almost. So we had a lot of the film. Yeah. Yeah. So we were kind of, we still had two major scenes to film and that was sort of a struggle, obviously. Um, And we, we wound up just waiting and delaying and delaying. And I would say that the biggest thing that came from the pandemic and something that uh, um, came up in a Q and A that somebody asked was, you know, did you, did you make this during the pandemic or like, what did, did that influence you at all? Because there's this feeling of loneliness and isolation. Yeah. And that really resonated with me. And I was like, Oh yeah, well that wasn't on purpose. It just happened during the course <laughs> of making it. Yeah. But if anything, you know, it, um, you know, it sort of, I think people will also, you know, people who are not disabled or people who are not whatever are, are gonna experience yeah, that same feeling of like, oh my God, I'm alone and I'm, not, I'm in my apartment and yes, what is yeah. life and what is the world even anymore? Um, you know, so that was really, I could say just in hindsight, you know, like we, we were very lucky to have so much done through the pandemic and we were able to all work virtually and send things, you know, literally yeah. across the world <laughs> to look yeah. at cuts and things like that, which was super awesome. But yeah, I think, you know, we, we were very lucky to get through it with so much of the film already done. Yeah, that's great. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, it, it is funny how like with the pandemic, it's just, it just put a light on, you know, mental health. And yeah. um, I felt like I became a really anxious person, you know, like getting back into the world. I was like, this yeah. is difficult. And I don't know why, but it's probably because I've been isolated for so long. And, you yeah. know, it, 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 so there are a lot of parallels between this film and, you know, our current reality. So yeah. Um, but yeah, the so you're you you are. Um, I know you you co-directed this film, but you've directed some other things, right? Um, I, I I swept or something like that. Oh was yeah, that? yeah, that was also yeah. a co-direction co that Stephen and was I did. It? Oh, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, called uh, called Swipe, and oh, swipe. we made that. Oh, like, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> Whatever. It's it's yeah. close. It's close. Yeah. Um, yeah. Called Swipe about a kleptomaniac. And uh, we really did it as an experiment. And that was actually our first project working with Armando and Lindsay. Ah, and okay, uh, okay. so we've just made this really funky short um, and we're on the streets, on the subway. And we just kind of used the people again, like this is very common in, in also Armando and Lindsay's style and their work. And Steven and I kind of all work very similar. We use what's around us. We use the people mm. we know, we use the city in a, as a character. And, um, that I mean, that was such a fun project. And again, it was something that came uh, very natural, but also looking back on it, like there's a film Smithereens. Do you know his film? Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so, you'll yeah. have to remind me. Because yeah, it's, well, it's it's, uh, <laughs> it just happens to be all of one of our favorite films, like a, a collective film that we all love very much because it's sort of, and I'm wearing the Feelys shirt, which was the band oh, that made, okay. made the, yeah. the score for the film. Oh my and, God, yes, yes. Yes, I, yes, you I, know I, it, yeah. I do know it and it's a great film. Yes, yeah. I, I, yeah. I just, I watch so many movies, so. Right, oh yeah, yeah. you have to like go in your Rolodex and pick, yeah. Right, but, right, yeah. <laughs> but uh, for all of us, it was, it was such a cool and um, sort of common denominator of, of things that we like. And, and so that film, sort of became a nod in, in its own way to that. Yeah. Um, and again, it was also, you know, this feeling of how do you capture something about a city? How do you capture something about a character in a really uh, fluid way and not mm -hmm. over prepare mm -hmm. and not overdo a shot list and not over try to have to get everything that you thought you were going to get and just kind of let life happen around you and play out in front of you. And so that film kind of is a little bit of that. And it's, yeah like yeah the, yeah that's cool and um I was gonna ask what's what's next for you do you are you working on anything or yeah yeah I mean I'm you know working on scripts and writing things about um you know I we talked about Sarah Polly a little bit and I really just love her work and I I yeah. recently watched mm -hmm. oh she's amazing I've watched um her documentary about her family Yes. Stories so we tell. Yeah. It's just uh -huh. mind blowing. And yeah. it really, yeah, it was just inspiring. Just, you know, I have quite a interesting family and, family. and uh, <laughs> like, I love you guys if you're watching. Um, but <laughs> on, <laughs> but, you know, I just things about that, that like, you know, I would like to explore more and, and right. um, yeah. I'm interested in. And, and so, yeah, I'm working on, on a script on that. And uh, Stephen and I are also planning on um, starting to work on a script that he wrote over 20 years ago about working in the first AIDS ward at Rikers Island as a teacher. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That sounds yeah. fascinating. Yeah. yeah. So we have, we are going to do that um, and, you know, just keep going and hoping that there's room to keep working and working with other people and other people and other filmmakers that I've been meeting along the way have just been super inspiring um, and you know, charging me to like go forward and make the project. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, just choking. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> Water break. <laughs> I got my little coffee here. So yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's all good. No, that's fine. No. Um, so yeah, I mean, I kind of have two more questions and, and then we can wrap things up. Um, so most of our readers and watchers are emerging female and non-binary filmmakers and I always like to ask like is there any piece of advice you would give these emerging artists yeah don't wait for money don't wait for anyone mm -hmm. because you're gonna always there's always gonna be a block there's always gonna be somebody to say no or 
you know, make you feel bad about your vision or the thing you want to do. And I would just say, you know, fi find the two people you trust the most yeah, and do it and make it happen. Like money is always going to be an issue. Support outside of your network is always going to be an issue. But mm -hmm. the thing that I've learned over and over and over again is that you will be responsible for everything. Even if you so-called have all the money, even if you have the best producers, even if you have the so-called magical team that's going to make it all happen, it's always going to be on you. And so if you yeah. start now and you take that approach that that's okay. And that actually, whatever you're going to make is going to be more authentic, more true to who you are, because it's really your voice pushing it forward. Yeah. That's my advice. And, and, you know, it's, I, I kept wanting some magical fairy person to come in and, and do it all for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I spent more time wasting in my mind, waiting for that person in a way yeah. than just go, just really actually doing it. And I, I've heard a lot of people give advice. And I think, you know, they're always just like, Oh, just have a really great script. Yeah. That's not advice. <laughs> like, no, it's not. No, it's that. not. Like, you don't, yeah. yeah. And you, you know, what? I hope your script is great, but even if it's not just make that, make it. Yeah. No, yeah. that's, that's great. And I, I hear that a lot from, you know, filmmakers, they're just, and I, I think that's, that's awesome. I, I, yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> good advice. Um, <laughs> and then my, my final question is, uh, dogs, big theme oh, of the film. Yeah. And why dogs and, and what are your <laughs> why not about dogs? I know, right, right. Yeah. What else are you gonna use? What dog? else are you yeah. gonna yeah. yeah. Well, um, so again, pulling from our actual lives, those the do the three dogs who are the big stars, um, Bitsy, Twiggy, and Chloe, were actually Steven's dogs and our dogs mm. collectively. So it, again, they whether they wanted to be in the movie or not, they were gonna be in the movie. Um, <laughs> and we also knew that, um, because uh, we had a dog walker that was coming every day at the same time, it was just this rhythm of our life where this guy would show up every day. And he's also in the film, Will, his name is Will. He, that's actually his dog walking business. And he was ah. just like, whatever dog you want to use. Some people, you know, I'll ask my clients if you can use your dog today. And so we just had this amazing access to the best thing That's in the world, great. which is dogs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, the character we wound up kind of stealing from our life of making her a dog walker, but it became a bigger piece of the film, which is that this character needed to be out in the world. Even people who don't want to be out in the world, even people who are completely closed off in the deepest part of themselves really do want to be connected. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. this was a way for this character to be isolated but connected and be protected by something that would see her and love her and something that would protect her out in the world mm -hmm. um so you know that was also part of like this this bigger theme that kept happening was how does this character connect what does she want like how does she get that yeah and yeah there's a moment in the film where you know she's talking about how the walking of the dogs like you know if somebody's laughing at her if somebody's making fun of her it doesn't matter because she's with this dog Right. And, yeah. You know, and why can't, can I feel like that even without a dog? Like, is that possible? And yeah. Steven's character just says like, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and right, it breaks my right. heart every time. And he just said, and it's cause it's also like me and Steven personally have had those discussions where I've just been like, I don't know, I don't know how to do it or I'm scared. I'm right. lost. Yeah. You know? and, and he would just kind of reflect back to me and just be like, you know, that's, that's a good question. Or like, that's okay. Like, you know? And yeah. So it's interesting how the dogs themselves sort of are these wiser characters and protective yeah. and, and they yeah. really were in our lives. And, you know, yeah. Yeah. I, I need to get a dog. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. I, I had a cat for so long. I'm like, I'm ready to graduate and get a dog. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm ready for it, but, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I love so, cats, but yeah, dogs are special. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Do you, 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 so do you have your own dog or? No, not, I don't have my own dog yet. We okay. actually, yeah, we lost three of them. They all sort of passed through the filming, which is so sad. And so, yeah. you know, it's just like, there's been a lot of mourning of that and not being able to replace them just yet. I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's kind of how I, I feel I about it. it. Yeah. yeah. 
I yeah. totally get that. But yeah, I guess we're at the end of time now, but this has been an amazing conversation. And I, um, I, it's still going to be on the festival circuit for a bit, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, we're gonna be okay. um in Bentonville next. Um, in oh yeah, that's yeah, a good festival. Yeah, we're really excited. Thank you, Gina Davis. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that'll be a great one. I've I've covered that festival before, and oh, I'm nice. just a big fan of Gina Davis and her likewise in- institute. So yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, so thank yeah. you. And uh, I, I'm excited to follow your career and, and this thank film. You. So thank you so much. I really appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.